Dr. Rajesh sir was the director, uh, professor and uh, HOD of uh, Kodikod Medical College, retired there. Now he is the professor and HOD in Malabar uh, Medical College Department of Ophthalmology. Kerala State of Ophthalmology was the president of the president. Over to Dr. Rajesh sir. Can I start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Vidod. And uh, hello. Uh, is I am audible? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Audible. Uh, first of all, I wish to express my thanks and gratitude to Dr. Uh, Rajiv Sumaran and Dr. Vino for organizing this program. And I recognize the presence of uh, Dr. Sumar and other. Uh, senior faculties of KSOS and uh, and this talk is mainly Dr. Ajiv told me that it must be uh, for uh, 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 paramedical students mainly and as you know that uh, uh, there is uh, defective vision uh, for defective vision plenty of spectacles are being prescribed all over the world we should say and uh, society of optometry and now as an introduction i wish to say that uh, know that uh, there are a number of uh, Spectacle shots and the spectacle description is being done by most and personalized. And uh, when this has been described, it must be by the patient's vision will not get improved. So, spectacle prescription is very, very important in the sense that. 90% of the persons, in the, even though they are not public patients, they are using spectacles. Using spectacles. Major, along with the major and minor operations in ophthalmology, in ophthalmology spectacle for prescription spectacle and its use also is very important. And, uh, and uh, it must be very accurate. And as per the um, from evaluation, it is seen that 2 to 3% of the spectacle which has been prescribed by uh, concerned persons are not suitable for the patient, either due to the inadequate testing or due to the inadequate dispensing of the spectacles. And uh, this has to be rectified, this has to be recognized and uh, this has to be uh, eliminated by proper recognition of the uh, spectacle strength and the proper prescription. And uh, my aim of this uh, talk is Mainly concentrating on the students uh, hearing for examination and at the same time so it may be useful for the those who are practicing uh, and uh, who are prescribing spectacles. In this introduction I am putting my slides there. So this is my uh, topic, the art of retinoscopy and uses of automatic refraction. And uh, before starting this uh, topic, I just uh, show the uh, picture of Sir William Stewart Dinkelga, who was the father of modern ophthalmology and contributed a lot of things for the improvement of the ophthalmology. <laughs> So, 
when a patient is committed to anybody for examination with the complaints of defective vision, immediately we have to assess the vision with the use of using smell chart. We are asking the patient to sit at a six meter distance, and after occluding one eye, patient is asked to read from top. And if the patient is reading up to six six in both eyes, everything is fine, no problem. And if the patient is not reading, your reflex must be to put a pin hole in front of that eye and to see whether the vision is improving or not. If it is improving, it does means that if you are dealing with a refractory error. Or if it is not improving, then again it could be a refractory error of high value or it could be an organic defect. In that cases where vision is not improving with the routine spectacle correction, we have to go ahead with the retinoscopy and further investigations. And uh, so that, that is the idea of uh, retinoscopy. And in, uh, there are two types of retinoscopes are available. One is a reflecting retinoscope and another is a, a streak retinoscope. And uh, this is a quoting from Dukelder. The most valuable method of estimating optical state of an eye is the technique of retinoscopy. Its popularity derived from both its usefulness and its accuracy, which when the technique is mastered can give results correct within 0 0.25 diameter. So the idea is when the, you are mastering this means you have to go on repeating, doing retinoscopy, generally you can master the things. And uh, these are the indications. So all the cases we did not do retinoscopy. Should not improving with the spectacles. If there is no organic causes for the defective vision. And uh, spectacle as suspected astigmatism to look at correct axis of the cylinder. And children not cooperating for routine vision assessment. And I should say the last one is most important. Keeps stands the most important reason or the uh, indication for atmosphere nowadays. Then before starting the actual procedure of retinoscopy and finding out the uh, refractive error, we should know some basics and fundamentals regarding retinoscopy. How we are assessing the uh, defect in vision. I mean, uh, that uh, how this has uh, error is been allocated. So it has got three stages. One is an illumination stage, another is a reflex stage, and there is projection stage. And the illumination stage, this is the starting of the retinoscopy. The light from the reflecting retinoscope illuminates a patch of retina. And the stage is common for all metropia, hypermetropia, and myopia. Whatever may be a refractive error or may be normal, but the illumination stage is normal. A light is put into the dilated pupil, through the dilated pupil into the retina, and there are a patch of retina is illuminated. And uh, now you can, I will explain this diagram. This is Now you can see uh, there are two. This is patient's eye. This is examiner's eye. This is the reflecting retinoscope. This is the hole at the middle of the retinoscope. Retinoscope, and this is original source of light. That's so. The light source is there behind the patient. So light is coming into the uh, reflecting retinoscope. Now this uh, retinoscope is in a slanting position, so no light enters the subject side. So this is the starting stage of retinoscopy where there is no light is entering there. Now you see the next one. Uh, now this retinoscope is a slightly erect, 
so that uh, this uh, ray of light which is falling here is directly going to the lower margin of the pupil and is forming an, a patch of retinized reflector. Now from this patch, the light will come back. I will show it in the next slide. And that is called reflex stage. Reflex stage in a emetropia. This is an emetropia. An illuminated patch will act as an object in its own and will form an image at the uh, far point of the eye. This is most important statement. An image is formed of an illuminated patch. And the image is formed at the far point of the eye. Far point of the eye depends upon whether it is is change, whether it is hypermetropic, myopic, or it is uh, emetropic. And in case of metropia, that means normal, this is image is formed at the infinity. We'll show the next slide. Now you can see this is the patch of retina. And the, from the upper border of patch, a determinant ray is coming to the lower border of the pupil and it grows the principal axis and it reaches in the upper part of the retinoscope. But it is still not reached in the examiner side. This is a, the, that will be in the second, third stage. So this is reflex stage in metropia. You can see this light is going um, to infinity. So image is popped at the infinity. The projection stage. Uh, this is the third stage. Now the image is projected to observer's retina by treating the retinoscope. Uh, at that stage, you will see a shadow at the pupillary area. And it will be with the movement in case of emetropia. Now I will show that in diagram. You can see that uh, a ray, determinant ray of light coming from the upper border of the patch is the lower border of the pupil, close the principal axis, that's the lower edge of the retinoscope, that's the upper part of the pupil of the examiner, and then reach the macula. At this stage, uh, the examiner will see uh, a shadow in the pupillary area. Shadow will be formed at the uh, pupillary, pupillary area at this stage, that is projection stage. Now, reflex and projection stage in hypermetropia. What is happening in hypermetropia? A virtual image is formed. I said uh, that depends upon the uh, refractive stage. In case of hypermetropia, this virtual image is formed the subject side, behind the subject side, that means patient side. And we will get a bit moment. I will show the uh, slide. And you can see that this is the hypermetropia and image is here only. So the same optics is same. It is coming, crossing the principal axis and then go, go to the uh, macula of the examiner. So in this case also we get a bit uh, moment of the shadow. Now, reflex and projection stage in myopia less than 1.5 diopter. Images form behind the observer. That means the uh, examiner. Yeah, the virtual image is formed behind the retina of the observer. And in that case also, we will get a width moment. And optics is almost the same as that of the other one. The determined ray from the upper part of the patch or border of the pupil, crossing the principal axis and coming here. Here the image is here. So the image formed in different uh, form depends upon the refractive state of an eye. In a metropia, it is at infinity. In a hypermetropia, behind the uh, patient's retina. And in myopia, less than uh, 1.5 uh, behind the examiner's retina. Now, reflex and projection stage in myopia greater than 1.5 diopter. Images form between the observer and the subject. And in that case, we will get an against movement. I will show the uh, diagram. See that the optics is entirely different in this case. Uh, from the upper border of the patch, upper border of the pupil, not crossing the principal axis, directly directly come to the upper edge of the retinoscope 
and then to the macula of the observer. So image is formed here. This is the image. So image is formed in between the patient and observer. So we will get a uh, movement is a different. So this is uh, some basic um, uh, optics of uh, retinoscopy. And uh, when we master this of the, uh, retinoscopy, he did not bother about that. Only thing you will be able to see a uh, image at the pupil of the pupillary area of the patient. That image will move either with the tilt of the retinoscope or against the tilt of the retinoscope. If it is moving along with the tilt of the retinoscope, it could be either emetropia, it could be either hypermetropia, or it could be myopia of less than 1.5 diameters. If it is moving in the opposite direction, it is myopia of more than 1.5 diameters. So, uh, requirements for retinoscopy for the basics of the uh, optics is for the students because uh, when you do retinoscopy, you will not bother about it. The thing look for the image and whether how, what is the pattern of the movement of the. Uh, uh, that uh, the shadow which is seen in a particular area. Then these are the requirements, a dark room. If a dark room is not available, uh, just switch off the light and uh, uh, just put the curtain of the window, that will be enough. Then original source of light, then reflecting the atmosphere, uh, trial frame, trial lenses. And this is an old uh, uh, reflecting atmosphere. You can see that uh, there is uh, two mirrors are there, and one will be uh, plain, another is concave. Plain will be ideal, and it will give accurate reading. And uh, this is the uh, hole at the middle of the retinoscope. And this is trial lenses. This is an old trial lens. Nowadays, I don't think this will be available. You can utilize the trial lenses from the trial frame. Remember that all the, uh, this was exclusively for uh, retinoscopy. And now different, different uh, powers are available of minus and plus. And uh, metriatics, amatropin. Atropine. This is still stand bottle because of uh, investigations that required in children. Atropine refraction, two days atropine on both people and fully dilating the pupil and then to the retinoscopy. We can accurately, with the correction of 0.25, after we can find out refractive error in children, especially for uh, myopic correction and those who are unblocked here, those who are uh, squinting around these things. These things are different. This is uh, you apply for age group for 40 years, and this is opicancy for 40 years. And uh, advantage of nutriatics and cyclophagic accommodation is paralyzed, and macular refraction can be estimated. Useful in children and suspected high hypermetropia. Whenever you suspect a high refractive it has to be with the uh, 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 dialectic. 
and these are the disadvantages of the disability and the psychological and the reflection of the reflection different from the center but then as you know acute glaucoma if the chamber is shallow the pediatrics may precipitate an acute glaucoma then economic disadvantage if atropine is for two weeks atropine will take two weeks for the pupil to come back to a normal condition and so that may be sometimes inconvenient then how to start the retinoscopy the patient is seated at uh, two third feet of the way that is at the arm lens of the observer a trial frame may or may not be placed so that depends if you are confident that without a trial frame that's okay ask the patient to look past the surgeon's ear not to the surgeon's ear but to uh, towards a distant place and it should be in the plane of the surgeon's ear start with the vertical and horizontal tilt of the retinoscope the vertical tilt and then horizontally tilt and then observe the uh, shadow at the pupil area shadow Uh, uh, this is one problem. Sometimes when we start retinoscopy, there may not be any shadow. And uh, if there is no shadow, we have to suspect that we are dealing with a high refractive error, high error, for example, minus 8 or minus 10. In that case, the shadow may not be visible. Or it could be a due to media hazy, a gap right, a vitreous opacity, a total retinal detachment, and all these things may be the reasons for no shadow. And if it is high refractive error is suspected, we have to start the retinoscopy, a random selection of it, a high power, a concave or a convex, minus 7, minus 8, minus 9, or minus 5. That depends. If minus is not okay, then you can go to the plus. It depends. It's an uh, just by selection only we have to find out. Then watch for any movements in the pupillary area. And if there is uh, some shadow is appearing and you are using a high power, that, that should be that side. For example, if it is minus, we have to use the minus lens. Like that, uh, we have to change. And if shadow is seen, now you are seeing a shadow. And you have to see whether the shadow is moving with or against the tilt of the retinoscope. Uh, that has to be very important. Then only we can utilize the movement with the adequate power of the lens. And another thing is speed. If the shadow is moving, it just means that the refractive error is less. It was a very faint movement. It just means that you are dealing with a case in which the refractive error will be very high. For example, minus 10, minus 12, or minus 8, like. Then shape of the shadow should be circular normally. If it is a shape is altered, it just means that is, you are not dealing with a refractive error either. But it could be a character corners or some uh, defect on the curvature of the cornea or something. Then meridian of the shadow may not be always vertical and horizontal. It can be an oblique axis also. Should be it may be in 60 degree and 120, 120 degree. Then you have to alter the position of the uh, retinoscope in such a pattern so that uh, you are the, that keeping that particular line. Then if you are getting a width moment, now you are getting a width moment. You are moving the retinoscope and the shadow is also is moving along the retinoscope. In that case, it could be either a higher metropia. Could be hypermetropia or myopia of less than 1.5 diameters. These are the three possibilities if the shadow is moving with, with the movement of the retinoscope. And then now you can see the shadow is moving. It's a vertical movement, it's a 90 degree movement. If it is an oblique, it will be uh, seen in a, an oblique fashion. Only. This is a horizontal movement, 180. Uh, degree this is moving and uh, this mobility we have to arrest by placing appropriate lens in front of the uh, eye 
and just continuing the uh, now an against moment against moment only one possibility is there that is myopia more than 1.5 diopters spectroscopy progress if it is a with moment we have to select concave lenses and if you are not aware of what is the uh, power required we have to start from the minimum power for example 0.5 0.5 then 1.5 like that we can improve increase the power of the lens which is required to adjust the movement of the shadow at the pupil area to find out accurately find out the power of the lens which can arrest the movement which you have seen in the previous slide then if it is against movement we have to select uh, concave lens in that case also we have to start from very low power and gradually improve the power increase the power at a particular power we will see that there is no against movement the movement is completely arrested now we are approaching to neutralization point or you are finishing the retinoscope how will you conclude that now a very good shadow is there we started the retinoscope go on moving that and uh, we can conclude that we are reaching or about to reach by noting the speed of the shadow speed of the shadow increase initially shadow will be slow but as you reach the neutralization point it will increase in uh, speed the shadow becomes smaller in size the bigger shadow become smaller in size then you can conclude that within 0.5 increase we will reach the neutralization point and uh, this is neutralization point the pupil will be filled with the light no shadow totally uh, light is there totally dark and impossible to say movement is with or against that means that, that particular strength of the lens which has all the movements they either concave or convex depending upon the uh, pattern of movement and uh, that gives an idea of realization point and this will be the appearance the, the shadow which we have seen earlier completely disappear now there is no shadow that means you are correctly reached in the final stage of uh, retinoscopy and you have very good assessment that uh, power uh, the one which uh, Lens, the power of the lens which is required for us this will give an clue to the refractive error then verification after reaching that point we can verify also whether you are correct or not that is by this bending forward just a bend a few slightly bend forward and uh, do the retinoscopy you will get a with move that means you are in correct by leaning back you will get an against move or you can add for example in 2 plus 2 we had a complete uh, neutralization in new place you uh, take point uh, maybe uh, plus 2.5 and uh, repeat the retinoscopy you will get a clear cut against the moment that means the power required is plus 2 and this is how we record the uh, results of retinoscopy a vertical meridian horizontal meridian and uh, this uh, sign has to be should be minus and uh, from this we can calculate the required power uh, depending upon the metriatics we used in this in case of amitropin we have to add minus 1.4 this atropin we have to add minus 1.2 if it is a tropic acid we have to add minus 1 add minus 1 because we are making this i pathological by putting and eye drops so we have to add whatever we have reduced from the eye has to be added so it must be um, for example in this case if it is atropin we have to add along with add minus 2 that means it will be minus 2 minus 0.5 the vertical meridian like that we can calculate in all meridians then these are the practical difficulties a positive aberration a negative aberration and scissor shadow i'll tell you the optics of uh, this is the appearance instead of seeing a shadow at the pupillary area you are seeing an area like this 
uh, illuminate area is here. And whenever you do either horizontal or vertical, uh, this will go on to rotating. Nothing, no movement. Nothing, no vertical or no horizontal movement. This will go on rotating. And that is called positive aberration. And this is the optics of positive aberration. Then see this is cornea. And from the periphery it is myopic. From the center of the cornea it is hypermetro. So if you are seeing a positive aberration, you just conclude that you are not dealing with the refractive. Say it could be a defect on the cornea. And most of the cases, in a case of keratoconus. We have to be very vigilant and look for the could be an earliest sign of keratoconus in which we can send the patient for other investor related investigations. And uh, negative aberration. Negative aberration, the optics is just opposite to this. This will be uh, the central will be at the myopic side, the central will be at the hypermetropic side. That also is uh, um, uh, other thing, not the factor. And another difficulty is the scissor shadow. Now you can see a shadow just like the shape of a, a closing lens of a scissor. So that uh, uh, I will show the optics of the scissor shadow. See, this patient had both hypermetropia and myopia. This part, uh, this is a myopic refraction. And from this part, this hypermetropic So this is a combination of hypermetropic and myopia. And usually it is a uh, scarring of the cornea. It is not a refractive error. And we did not do a retinoscopy in that case. Patients should be referred to a corneal surgery for dealing the uh, corneal opacity. Now, streak retinoscope. Streak retinoscope, uh, I have been telling about the uh, retinoscope. And uh, now the streak retinoscopes are available. It's very commonly available. And the difference is, it's illumination, the luminous type of retinoscope. The light source is incorporated in the retinoscope. And there is no separate, uh, I have already shown one tag showing an original source of light. Uh, coming to uh, fixing and the head and the application that is not required. It is self -limited. And uh, intensity and type of light beam can be controlled. It can be well controlled the uh, light beam. The thickness of the beam can be so This is a photograph of streak retinoscope and uh, a refraction with the retinoscope streak. Method is same as that of reflecting retinoscope. In case, uh, instead of seeing a shadow, a band of light is seen in the pupil area. And another band of light is outside the pupil. It has to be observed. I'll show the diagram. See, uh, one band outside the pupil area, another inside the pupil area. Now you have to go and do the retinoscopy, just like we have been uh, using a reflecting retinoscope. And then now you can see a uh, width movement. Both the uh, beam inside and outside are moving in the same direction. So in this case, we have to neutralize this movement using a concave, convex lens. And this is an against movement. Now you can see the shadow inside the pupillary area is moving against the one uh, which is present outside. The in this case, we have to uh, arrest the movement using a concave lens and you have to reach the neutral point. And the neutral point will be like this. There is no shadow, no beam of light in the pupillary area, the one which will be present outside will be seen there. And this will be the appearance if the streak is not in correct axis. The importance on the very useful thing while using um, a streak retinoscope is to locate the axis of the uh, cylinder. This will be an appearance and then we have to change the uh, pattern of the uh, light, light beam and it has to be in alliance with that of the which is remaining outside. So, uh, conclusion of this topic, retinoscopy is an art which requires much pain-taking practice and cannot be learned in a day. 
and it is only after surgeon has done many retinal scopies that he can justifiably rely on his finding with any degree of safety. So it is not uh, just understanding those who post graduates or those elementary uh, students. They have to find some time to do one or two retinal scopies every day, or at least one or two retinal scopies every day. So that by the end of their course, they will be expert. I have seen the um, refractionist who by just seeing the um, shadow, they can assess that uh, this could be a myopia of minus two, minus three, like that. They will predict. After seeing that shadow itself, we can say what will be the uh, degree of myopia or uh, hyperemetropia experience. And then a few words about the auto refractometry. So, retinoscopy is uh, for academic purpose only. It has been incorporated in the examination of optometry, DOA, MS, and of course, the DOA is not there now, and national board examination also. In that case, uh, this, uh, when you are appearing for examination, retinoscopy will be asked as a uh, fundamental uh, thing. If you make a mistake, or you somebody recognize that you are not aware of retinoscopy that will definitely create some problem during examination point of view. But in case of uh, now, where the modern thing is, has been introduced, that is auto refractometry. You have to accept that and uh, that facility it has to be accepted. And so you can utilize that, but at the same time, you should have a concrete knowledge of what is happening or what is the excite uh, reason. Uh, for prescribing or basics and fundamentals in that. And this uh, uh, picture uh, utilized from the party. You can see that patients are sitting here. In this you will get the uh, correct reading uh, with the available. So it's very easy. Uh, we put a minute within what the minutes we can go. And in this case also, at the development, there was subjective and objective autorefractometers were there. And subjective patient himself is managing the joystick. And he will uh, move the joystick and he will, now I can, uh, the clarity is there. And objective means uh, now they get the available one is objective. The examiner can uh, decide and ask the patient whether it is clear where you are looking at this. Object is the one which is available now. And the limitations, alignment problem, the patient has to be asked to sit correctly. And uh, then another problem is accommodation. But uh, this is early refractometers. Nowadays, the one which is uh, uh, very, very good, and both these problems, are, all the problems, has been rectified in the latest ones. And the advantage is uh, time is very uh, five minutes we can finish up. And easy to perform. And uh, not possible in children. So the disadvantages. And uh, mental retardation. And then associated with this is And uh, these things, uh, this will not be uh, possible. So in conclusion, uh, I wish to uh, Express once again that students should practice retinoscopy so that your knowledge will be concrete, your knowledge will be fundamental, and whatever spectacles, wherever you go, the spectacle prescription must be excited because there are plenty of uh, modern surgeries are going on in ophthalmology, but still, if you just observe that 90% uh, of the population is using spectacles. So, spectacle prescription and is very, very important in that sense. No spectacle should come back because of inadequate prescription. That should be your aim. No prescription should be come back because of your mistake in prescribing your spectacles. That must be very important. Thank you very much for the question listening. Thank you. Thank you all. Fogging, uh, fogging technique is uh, useful in case of 
you know that uh, when um, hypermetropia in hypermetropia the thing is that the child will accommodate like anything so we have to add you have to paralyze the uh, accommodation by using convex lenses of high strength you have to add uh, convex lens of high strength in the uh, trial frame and then we have to do the accommodation must be eliminated but uh, that problem is already you now if the child is less than 5 years old uh, and if you suspect amblyopia you there is a skew it is better to do um, uh, retinoscopy in atrophy at least once in their life and that can paper can be done and it can be utilized for the sir i have a uh, doubt eh yeah. Uh, sir, while doing retinoscopy, uh, I can uh, notice a central and a peripheral shadow. And when I put lenses in the trial case, uh, the central shadow may be uh, neutralized, but there there will be a movement in the peripheral also. So, it is is it necessary to neutralize the peripheral movement also? No, because the central shadow is more important. That uh, that okay. is concerned with the macular refraction. Uh, uh, okay. If the pupil is fully dilated, that may happen. because uh, the, the refraction at the periphery and center may not be seen maybe slight difference may be there so whether if the central area is clear we have to neutralize the central area that will be excellent okay thank you sir okay. binocular what is that binocular balancing method sir <laughs> no idea okay if anybody uh, anybody participating uh, one minute one minute if anybody anybody participating in this group may know uh, binocular what the answer of that question what the answer please answer please answer sir i know that yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir binocular balancing means it's uh, uh, like a maintaining the accommodation in both eye actually eh yeah. so uh, maintaining the accommodation to the both eye so we do it ultimately with the both eyes so ask the patient to look at a distance so it is the end of the like a refraction procedure it is in depth uh, refractive procedure refractive procedure yeah yeah so end of the refraction so once you done the refraction everything like a uh, 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 dew chrome and uh, like a uh, subjective objective once you done everything so you have to do with the binocular balancing so make sure that the accommodation is rest as well as for the distance so you have to do with the ultimately with the both eyes so ask the patient to look at a distance for doing the bin, uh, like a binocular balancing there are the two or three method is there so usually we used to do it with like a prism or like a point for your points on say we can put it as a both eye uh, like a plus points and say we will put it ultimately for the both eye so then we will ask the patient to like whether the it is a object is a clear or not so we will do the alternate cover test in that time so if the patient is saying uh, if it is a fine which i it is a clear so that means we have to put it as a more like a point seven five so before that you should know that the which i it is a dominant and non dominant i so that also make sure that Okay, fine. It is uh, okay, actually fine. it is correction. Uh, it is correction. Yeah, and no, no, it is maintaining the accommodation. It is maintaining the accommodation for distance as well as because some of the patient they used to like accommodate for distance as well as so those things mm-hmm. it will be much helpful for especially like a hypermetropic. So especially for the children as well as so those people it will be very helpful as well as so who are having like okay, a okay. problem as well as okay, okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. 
Chisar shadow, it is very difficult to neutralize, and we have to uh, observe the both the scissor, um, both the limbs of the scissors, and then in one um, bond uh, doing the retinoscopy. Once the both both the uh, I mean when the scissor seems to be closed. It is not the arrest of the moment the, when the limbs of the scissor, open scissor, seems to be closed, you can stop the retinoscope. Actually, this retinoscope is not required yeah, in such a circumstance because it could be due to a scar on the cornea and change in the curvature of the cornea. It has to be uh, managed separately. It is not a refractive error at all. But the, theoretically, it has been said that you have to do the retinoscopy in the, the closure of the open limbs of the scissor. Uh, if there is a media opacity, if the abstract is there, uh, we, we can't do uh, retinoscopy. If it is hemorrhage is there, we can do retinoscopy. Or if there is a, some retinal detachment also is there, the glow may be different than the shadow. The shadow which I usually seen in the refractive errors may not be there in the other conditions. Dominant eye. Eh? Eh, do To check the... Whether the eye is dominant or not, we have to check both eyes. We have to find out equal importance has to be given to both eyes and the principle. That is, uh, I already explained by gradually increasing the uh, power of the lens which is required and uh, the particular strength, you will see that uh, there is no movement of the shadow. You have to stop at that point. That's definite. Another thing is uh, being the retinoscopy. Another important thing is that most is important in the sense that this may be a retinoscopy, may be a first uh, clinical test for a, a keratoconus. If you are seeing that uh, retinoscopy and uh, shadow is a different, uh, different types of uh, things which uh, normally expected in refractive is not seen, in that case we have to uh, screen that patient for retinoscopy, I mean uh, corneal curvature. Could be a case of character points. Muscle balancing test, uh, I guess uh, we have to listen to that and all uh, this testing. That's why I don't think uh, this is uh, related to our topic of concern. Sir, uh, hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Sir, myself, Sadish, I have a question. Okay, thank you. How can we perform a retinoscopy or water in nystagmus patients? Nystagmus. Nystagmus patient. Eh? Nystagmus. Can you hear me? Yeah. Retinoscopy in nystagmus will be very difficult because uh, I swear the patient is not able to look at the distance. 
the slight difficulty and Hello. all these things we can perform the uh, retinoscopy and uh, Hello, sir if a patient has nystagmus yeah how could we perform yeah we have to do the retinoscopy and if uh, other methods also may be used for example an uh, examination with the uh, direct ophthalmoscope give you an idea for example if you are able to see the retina with uh, minus 3 or minus 5 you can say that it is uh, myopic like that accurate uh, uh, detection of retinoscopy may be difficult in terms of uh, instruments so, sorry for interfering. Hello. I just so, want to know uh, how to perform mistake must be patient with automated refractometry. Automated refractometry. Automated refractometry may be helpful. But uh, how these patients will, uh, I mean, concentrate on that uh, object, image. It is slightly difficult to do. Uh, I think I explained if uh, now go is seen, uh, the condition may be either a, a high refractive error. Or it could be a media AC. In a high refractive error, I have already explained that we have to select the high power of the lens and then go ahead. Or if it is a media opacity, it's an entirely different thing. You have to uh, see the retina, you have to see the colors, optic nerve, everything you have to see and then proceed up. How many, how many participants are there? Thank you, uh, Dr. Sajiv and uh, you know, Dr. Sashi. I used to have a talk like this. Thank you very much to all, all those who have been Thank you.